One thing COVID taught us is that we can work remotely. Now, can we be more productive? Sometimes, in some ways, yes. Because maybe you don't have all the office politics and all of the chatter going on and you can sit there at your home and really focus on getting work done. Or you sit at home and you've got all these other things staring at you that you want to do or family running around and taking up your time. And so you're not as productive. Being on Zoom meetings, you know, it's like sitting there in your shorts with your shirt and tie on or whatever. And are we really being productive? I think one thing that remote work has caused is a lack of teamwork, a lack of collaboration. It's, it's not helping. The speed of work today, the speed of business today because of technology, because of the internet, because of all the social media is rapidly increasing. The speed of work and speed of business is growing so fast. It's increasing so fast. This technology makes it so much easier to stay connected. Truly it does in this digital world. But connected and being truly productive can sometimes be at odds. Because in order for a team to be productive, you've got to have collaboration. So it's like, what's collaboration? I mean, I talk to them, or we do Zoom meetings, and we, you know, we get our work done. And But collaboration is what pulls a team together. And it helps facilitate new skills and new opportunities will appear when collaboration of a team starts gelling this team into something that's very efficient and very productive. And collaboration can only happen to a point online in the digital world. It's got to happen really face to face. You've got to interact with people. So as this world opens back up and people get back to work, I hope businesses start talking to their employees about come back to work because it's the collaboration that we have being together that's important. Good collaboration relies on being open with each other and participation between the members of your team. And in order to do that, you need to have clear communication. You need to, as a leader, you need to be able to clearly communicate the expectations that you have for each team member. And they need to understand what their position is. You need to clearly communicate to each team member what their position of the team in the business is and the position of all the other team members and the responsibilities that they each have on the team. That needs to be clearly communicated in order for collaboration to begin. Each one of your team members has got to understand what their own responsibilities are and how that helps them become part of the bigger whole, the bigger team. If everybody knows where they stand on the team and what their part of the team is and how they will become part of the success of the team, they will then learn how to work and find a way to work better together. That way everyone is on the same page as you move forward to accomplish your goals. That's the next one. You need to set team goals or business goals. You know, if you're a small business and your team is all your employees together, that's your team, your business goals. You need to set goals. I teach about smarter goals. Sometimes you'll hear smart, S-M-A-R-T. I call them smarter, S-M-A-R-T-E-R. -E Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, time-bound, exciting, and risky. Yeah, your goals need to be a bit risky because if you're not pushing for a really high goal, you're going to, I mean, you're going to hit here. If you push for this, you're going to hit here. If you only push for this, you're going to hit here. So what you need to, yeah, it needs to be risky. Once you set goals for your team and you set smarter goals, then the individual effort of your team members will stay on track with the overall goals that the team has. Because once they, your team members know what their responsibility is on the team and they know where you're going and what the goal is, then they know how to 
be a part of and accomplish what they need to accomplish so that they can accomplish the goals of the team. They will feel like they are part of the collective whole working and pushing forward. The third thing that you need to do to foster collaboration on your team is encourage creativity. You need to have regular brainstorming sessions and new idea creation sessions because it encourages resourcefulness. If team members know that their ideas will be heard and their ideas will be listened to without just going, that's stupid, why do you think that'll work? If we have regular brainstorming sessions where we can talk about where we're at, where we're going, what the challenges are and how we need to overcome them, then new ideas will come out and all of your team members' resourcefulness can be encouraged because now they know that they're listened to and they have an opportunity to change the path forward with their own idea. It's the importance of input and opinion of your teammates that moves that moves the needle forward. The fourth thing that you need to do to foster collaboration on your team is provide some space for social opportunities. Your team can't just operate in isolation. That's why remote work is a problem for collaboration. There's a saying, all work and no play, something, I don't know, doesn't make your life really good. You can't work all the time. The one thing I found about working on a team is you've got to have some time away where that you can be together to enjoy being together, not working, but in an activity where you enjoy being together so you can learn who each other is. You get to know each other better as a person, not as a coworker. And when you do this, you get to draw on the skills of other people to help complete the projects more effectively because now you know them as an individual. You know what excites them. You know what they like to do outside of work. And because of that, you can draw on those experiences or those skills that they have that you maybe didn't even know to help complete a project and to get there quicker and faster. The fifth thing that you need to do to help build collaboration, foster collaboration on your team is then once you know these skills and these abilities that they have, leverage their strengths. You need to be able to position your teammates in order to achieve the most that they can by assigning them to tasks that allow them to succeed. Once you know what your teammates can do what, and what their skills are and what their abilities are and what their interests are, you can position them in your team in order to be able to achieve the task and to succeed themselves, not only for the team to succeed, but they can succeed. It's like the concept you've heard about putting the right people on the bus in the right seats. And then you need to make sure that you reward them. Reward them as an individual for their individual success, but reward the team for the team's accomplishments. We all like to be rewarded. We all like to be recognized. Recognize them for the individual accomplishments and the team accomplishments. And I promise you, they'll go so much farther, faster than you can you would ever expect if they know they're going to be recognized and rewarded for it. Okay, developing inclusive teams where everyone has a voice and an idea, where they can speak up and where they can act as part of a team, it's, it's so important. If you do that, if you can develop a collaborative team where they know that they're being listened to, they know that their ideas are, will be acknowledged, will be listened to, will be taken into account and not just blown off, where everybody has a voice and every idea is at least considered important and worked up against the goals of the group then they will act more as a team together and just imagine what you'll be able to accomplish when they do that. I'm Mark Schinner. I'm here growing your success. I hope you have a great day today. I'll be back and talk to you tomorrow.